Alright, that's probably, hopefully, enough to get our first layer on. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this, knock that out of the way, so we can get started on making our first layer. One thing I don't have in front of me that I forgot is i got to go get some water. So, I'll be right back. Alright, we're going to start working on our first layer. Um, I've got my water as well as the glue. Go ahead and get rid of watch and everything else. And I don't want to get messed up. Again, you're going to need some type of container. doesn't matter what it is. It just happened to be, uh, um, for all intents and purposes, I went and bought a brand new one with lid uh, just to make it uh, a little bit more presentable for you guys. Yes, I do care about this. But uh, I need our container. going to need some water. Did nothing but refill a jug. No, you do not need to go buy special water for this. Tap water, perfect. And you're going to need your glue. Again, just regular white glue is all you need. Doesn't need to be anything special or fancy. Um, just happens to be that I'm able to get, and I'm sure you are too if you've got a Lowe's near you, a gallon of Elmer's. I'm sure that some of the other places might sell larger containers as well. It's a whole lot easier than having to deal with a bunch of tiny little bottles of glue everywhere. This first step, our first layer I should say, of paper mache when you go to put it on, it's a little bit daunting, can get a little frustrating. Um, trust me when I say that the additional layers that you put on are a whole lot easier. Main reason the first layer is a little bit more um, daunting than the rest is because you're dealing with a slick surface. So trying to get that paper and this glue to bite onto this, it's a pain in the butt. I'm going to tell you right up front. So once you start getting it on there, start laying it on, no biggie. You just keep on hitting it and eventually you get enough built onto that first layer and you got enough glue slapped around all over the place that it starts to stick. But as far as the glue, the glue and the water, um, really no particular uh, um, order of things here when it comes to measurement. Um, I just pour as much glue as I feel like I'm going to use. With this being the first layer, we're going to end up using quite a bit just because we've got a top to this so we can keep on uh, using this for each one of our additional layers. So I've got plenty of glue in there. and. Kind of like a, if you, if you need a measurement, maybe like a three to one ratio, we're just going to pour our water right on in. Check that out, see how that is. Just get your hands in, get that good and mixed up. Obviously, the glue itself has a much thicker viscosity than what the water does. So you're just looking to break that glue down a little bit make it a lot easier for the paper. You just dip it in, just soak the paper in it as you're going. Just helps uh, that paper absorb. Otherwise, if it was just that straight glue, you're going to be using a lot more of it than what you ever needed to. Plus, it's a lot more difficult for that paper to absorb it. There are plenty of recipes out there that use all kinds of uh, items, flour, you name it. Problem with all of those versus just using straight up white glue and water is mold. That stuff is just nasty. It stinks over time. And I like to just stay clear of it. It doesn't get much easier than glue and water. Uh, this looks like this is fine. And you can see earlier it's a lot runnier now. It's nothing like the, the straight glue. So this is fine. You just don't want to have so much water in there that you've got more water than glue. It's not going to do you any good because once it dries, there's not going to be anything there to bond it. So 
that's it when it comes to the adhesive part of it. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pile. Um, I highly recommend that you got a table surface that you really don't care about. Um, I've just got a fold up table underneath this. Um, I'm in the packaging industry, so I was able to get some corrugated plastic. I just had this thing layered with it. So with it being plastic, I can get the glue, get muck all over this. I can pop it right back off if I need to. Otherwise, just throw it away and I'm good. Wouldn't recommend putting paper down or anything. That's just going to be a, a disaster and a mess in the making. Go ahead and break some of this up. All I'm going to do, stick the paper in, pull it out. I'm going to go ahead and run both my fingers down just to get some of that excess off. Plus, it kind of helps push that, that water and glue into the paper. And that's it. Go ahead and start applying it. We're going to leave this stuck out. So I'm just going to start with the top here. And you really want to push that down in those ridges that you created. This particular pumpkin turned out to be fairly flat. I don't have real, real heavy ridges. Some of the other ones I've made in the past have super deep ridges. And you want to make sure that you get those packed in there good and tight. Um, if you do want deeper and heavier ridge lines, just don't stuff your bag as much as I did on this particular one. Um, that obviously you have more void area, so when you're wrapping that string around, it's, it can dig into there further. I had this one packed in there pretty good and tight, so got in there just enough. You can see this one right here is a lot deeper than what it appears. It goes way back in there. So you want to make sure you get that paper shoved in there. And we want to build that up as much as possible. I'm just going to work on basically one third of this pumpkin. I'm going to get this thing covered up as much as possible. You're going to see me working, at least on this first layer, a lot in the same direction just with these strips. As I go go along with a lot of the other layers, I'll end up overlapping. I'll go ahead and run them the opposite way, or at least I'll cross them at angles just so that I can build up the strength. It's no different than plywood or anything else that you see where you take the grain and you, uh, you cross laminate it. It makes it a lot sturdier, stronger, even probably helps on uh, being able to get fewer layers on here. And of course, I'm getting glue everywhere. Don't care. As long as I'm not getting it all over me. Of course, just like anything else, if you are a haunter, if you got a decent shirt on that you like and you ruin it because you've made props in it. So, and you see, I'm not taking much effort to get this on here. These edges are falling right into each other, and that's just primarily because we've got that rough feathered edge. If we'd had that factory cut edge on there. This stuff would be sticking up all over the place and it would just drive me insane. It's not taking much here. I know I said this first layer is a little daunting to, to get on because of that slick surface. Um, not so bad. I don't want to scare people off by uh, making it seem like it's a lot harder than what it is, but I hate, can't stand some of these tutorials and some of these uh, slideshows and stuff that they really do try to make it look a lot easier than what it really is, and it does nothing but piss people off and frustrate them to the point that they just give up. So you're just going to keep repeating this until you get this thing. You get a nice, solid layer on here for the first layer. I'm going to go ahead and continue. Just laying this thing on as much as I can, getting everything covered. Um, it's going to be real apparent when this thing dries out that if you've missed a, a hole or missed an area because you're going to see the bag sticking through, don't fret. No big deal. I'm sure I'm going to do it. I've done it every time. You're putting, you're putting many, many layers on here. Just make sure that next layer has got that uh, particular spot covered. This is not that complicated and there's no reason to get frustrated over it. Just sit back and uh, kind of let your mind wander. If anything, you can start looking at it and, and trying to imagine what type of face. That always seems to be 
where I struggle is when I look at it and I try to figure out what kind of face I'm going to cut into this thing. So now's a good time to start looking at your pumpkin and thinking about what you want. Okay, once you've gotten your first layer done on the top, it's time to start doing the bottom. You could obviously just take this thing, flip it over, start working on the bottom. Um, it does end up having a little bit of a, a challenge just because you do already have the top done and you've got the glue and everything else. You're going to run into an issue where it's going to stick and it's going to want to pull away. One of the things that I found that makes it a little bit easier is get another bucket, doesn't matter what shape or size, put it down and then just turn it over in place to the top resting on it. Hopefully you can get one. This is probably a little too tall and going to make it a little bit more complicated, but at least that way you're only dealing with that small surface area where it's touching versus dealing with the entire um, top of it resting on on your work surface. You can see my work surface is covered with glue. It's just going to make it a mess. I may have to do that anyway just because I think this bucket might be a little too tall and uh, may not be stable enough. We're going to give it a try. So we're going to continue what we've been doing on the top but now on the bottom. Um, go ahead and make sure that you overlap your paper your strips that you've worked on the top on the top and overlap those from the bottom over. This is also going to be good because it's going to end up adding even an additional layer because of the overlap around the main body of this because at one point you're going to be choosing what side and where you're going to start cutting into this thing and the larger and the thicker that is the better off you're going to be. So go ahead and make sure everything's overlapped and covered and we're just going to continue uh, as we were earlier and get this first layer on this bottom. Making sure we work really heavy into those grooves to get them stuck way down in there so that we can start getting that area really built up and, uh, and defined. something smaller to work with than what this thing's provided. Bingo, whole Tupperware. Don't tell my wife. I've obviously already rented it from a previous project. Now that you've got pretty much well covered, what I usually do is kind of come back and just cross weave some of this paper across the bottom since we've had all of these coming up and kind of meeting in the center. Kind of leaves a void. I think if we were to hang this thing up, those that have a tendency just to want to come and fall off, you're going to come back the next day and you're going to have all these things dangling down. Um, so just kind of as a preventive measure, whether or not it's neat or not, don't know, don't want to find out either. Um, I just take strips and just lay them across that bottom 
just to kind of help lock everything in. Uh, a lot of the times you don't really need much extra glue. You've already got so much accumulated all over this thing that you can pretty much lay them on there dry, rub them in, let it soak up a lot of that extra glue and water that's all over the place. Just get this thing to bond together really, really well. You're going to eventually, at the end of this, be cutting a hole out of this anyway, so this, these extra layers that are all put on here are going to help thicken this up and give you a nice edge around that cutout make it very strong and rigid, keep it from wanting to tear out. Might as well utilize the what glue I have all over the table too. You can see this isn't uh, nothing fancy about it. Try not to take it too seriously. Over complicating things, just it's just paper, glue, and a form, and everything thrown together. I think that pretty much covers the bottom. And get this got some stragglers. I'm gonna go back over it, smooth down anything that you see that might be sticking up. If you need to, if things are looking too dry, you can always stick your hand in the glue. Just kind of wet your hand so it rubs off right across the top without sticking. If things are starting to get too dry or your hands and it's getting tacky, when you start to do this, you're going to start pulling layers off and then it is going to get frustrating. So I'll go around this one more time just to make sure things are stuck down, edges are smoothed down. You don't have to worry or fuss about it too much at this point. It is only the first layer. We've got several more to go on. Um, once we get into the clay portion of it, you're going to see that it doesn't matter one bit because with that clay, you're able to build up, you're able to do anything you want and just let your imagination go crazy and make this thing look nasty as you want it to. That's when the fun and the magic really happens. Alright, looks like everything's pretty much taken care of on it. We'll go ahead and flip this thing back over and here is we're having these handles and having all of this top left on here helps out a great deal. So I'll hold on to it. I'll go ahead and shove the top back down, you're more than likely going to have uh, some issues on the top just because you had it stuck down and you got that much more glue just pouring down over this thing. Uh, I mean, this thing's just nasty wet right now from all that extra glue pouring down from the bottom up to the top. All right, once you've got everything stuck down and you're pretty pleased with it, you're going to want to hang this thing up to dry. That's the whole reason why we got the bag with the handle. That way we can complete the entire pumpkin from, from top to bottom without having to do this in sections. Otherwise, you're going to have to do the top, let the top dry before you do the bottom, and then back and forth. This thing already takes long enough as it is. I want to do the entire thing all at once, each layer, and just let it hang dry. That way it dries evenly we don't have any of the other issues. So get yourself set up already with a place to hang this. Make sure that there's nothing under it that you have to worry about spoiling because there is going to be glue dripping from this. Um, whether that's a, a nail, something protruding off a wall, off a ceiling, what have you. I just kind of rigged something up here with some PVC pipe that I can hang this from. I'm just going to slip this over. I tied a knot in this ahead of time. And we're like I said, we're just going to let this set overnight. Probably going to go ahead to put a fan on it just to help some circulation and, and help it dry faster. Go ahead and set the 
and hold on to the bucket so that way you on your next layer you're going to do the same thing. You're going to set it up on its top and everything else and utilize that so we, it's not on the flat bottom. Go ahead and put your lid on your glue. Once that's on, this is good to go for tomorrow for the next layer and we can keep using this until we have to add more. Um, as you can see, my work area, not the cleanest in the world, don't really care. Um, I'm just going to throw some of this off to the side. It's got glue on it. I can always use that later. It might make it a little bit more troublesome. In the meantime, I'm just going to take some of this extra paper and get some of this excess glue wiped up so it'll be good and dry for tomorrow. And that's it. See you tomorrow. You put the second layer on.